are Garage Clay. I'm Claire. I'm Elise. And today we are going to go over how to make a hand uh, built mug. Super easy. Um, this doesn't require any sort of wheel. The uh, tools that you'll need to, for today's project are number one, you'll need a blank, or I guess it could have stuff on it, but a sheet of eight and a half by 11 normal printer paper, a mud shark, or some sort of object to cut your clay. A rolling pin, a sponge, um, clay. So today we are going to be working with Moroccan sand clay. This is a really nice cone six clay body made by Laguna that we sell here at Garage Clay. It's one of our favorites. Um, we recommend having a wire cutter to easily cut the clay. Clay is sold in 25 pound bricks. And then another optional item that we love to hand build with is just like a nice small little polymer rib. And then lastly is this teeth rib. I don't know if you can see, but it basically has a uh, like comb texture on the end for slipping and scoring. Perfect. And then water, a bowl of water. And that is, I think, it. Cool, let's get started. So first step is, of course, slam wedging the clay. So for this project, you will need around two pounds of clay. What fruit is around you? <laughs> A grapefruit. Or a grapefruit size. <laughs> so to slam wedge, you ball your clay up, you slam it down, you pick it back up, slam it down again. Pretty simple. So the reason behind slam wedging is, or wedging in general, is to compress all of the clay particles together so it doesn't crack when you fire it and it doesn't have any air bubbles in it. Alright, slam wedging. Before you roll out your clay, you are going to um, create your template with your sheet of paper. So to do this, you're going to fold the long way into thirds. One could even say hot dog style. You can do it the hot dog style <laughs> into thirds. And then you are going to unfold it and fold down one third of your paper. So this is the shape that you are going to be making your mug out of. So it's going to roll and be like that. Now we're going to flatten this out and uh, with this shape in mind. So to start flattening, you're going to slam it down on one side, flip it over, slam it back down again. This is going to take a little bit of time to kind of slam it. You're going to want the it to be around an inch in width. Again, when you're slamming it, kind of keep this rectangle shape in mind. Once your patty is around an inch in width, you're going to do the pitter-patter punch. <laughs> so this is with the palm of your hand. And you're gonna just slowly kind of like lightly pound it down, flip it over, pound it down again. I'm really like intentionally going back and forth in that rectangle shape as opposed to starting in the middle and working outward to make a circle. Yeah. Once you have a good start to your slab and you're about an inch to a half an inch thick, we're going to finish out the slab rolling with your rolling pin. So again, just making sure that it's going to fit the size of your template that you have, and you're just gonna roll it out. Roll it. Roll it. Uh, make sure that you are flipping your slab periodically so it doesn't stick to one side. Have your slab all rolled out to around a fourth of an inch or less you are going to prep the slab so either with a really damp sponge and or a rib you can kind of smooth it out on both sides and when you're doing this you're also kind of compressing it down this just uh, compresses all the clay particles and also gets rid of any cracks or imperfections you have on your clay before either making your mug or adding any texture After you have your clay slab prepped and nice and smooth, 
you're going to add any texture. So this could be any impressed texture. You could scrape it with this scraper. Um, I personally am going to roll some of this corrugated cardboard into my slab. Um, so this is an optional step, but it's really fun to add any sort of design or carving that you want. I think for today, mine is going to be left plain. So I'm excited to see that though. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, the design that this made is really cool. Let me show you. It's just like a really subtle texture. Yeah, I'm into that. Alright, I'm gonna stick to this plane for now, but I'm gonna regret it later. <laughs> <laughs> so if you did add design, you likely probably want that on the outside of your mug. So for this next process, you're gonna flip it so the design is on the bottom of your working surface. And you're going to take your template, which again is two-thirds of your 8x11. You're going to lay it down and trim out your slab to equal this template. So the next step is to slip and score. So eventually this is going to roll up and this outer edge is going to meet the inside edge here. So you're going to want to uh, score this lip right here. And scoring basically just means roughing it up. So I like to take the teethed rib, rough this up. You can also, Elise is just using the mud shark tool. And then once you get your slab scored on this side, you're going to score the bottom side of your other slab because those two are going to pull together and meet. Then you can prop your clay up, your slab up, and you're going to add water to that scored edge. And then meet them together. So I like to have kind of like an overlap where you can see the seam. If you don't like that, you can spend some extra time in this next step really smoothing it out. But for me, I'm just going to pinch the two sides together. And then basically like massage that seam so the two pieces really adhere. Even if you're leaving a little overlapping, make sure you take like a fettling knife and smooth out that joint just to ensure the strength of the pot once it dries and reduce any chance of cracking. You're going to want to make sure you hit the seam on the outside and then also on the inside. Good call. Hold your cylinder that you've just created and pat down both sides so that they're flat. And then next you're going to spend some time really smoothing out the surface. And like Elise was saying, any cracks that have developed, this is a time where you're gonna really smooth them out. So next you are going to roll out a small chunk for uh, the bottom circle that's gonna attach for your mug and then also for your handle. So just like rolling out the slab for the mug body, pat it into a ball, slam it down, pitter patter, and roll. Do punch. this. <laughs> this slab can be a little bit thicker than a quarter inch because it's going to create your bottom, which you want just a little bit heftier, not super, super thin, um, and then as well as your handle. Once your slab is nice and the width that you like it, you are going to smooth it out with a sponge or a rib, just like you did to the body of your mug. All right, then you are going to place your cylinder onto the slab that you just rolled out. And you're going to cut along the edge. 
of your mug body so that it's the perfect bottom for your mug. It's gonna be different for everyone as everyone's mug is gonna be a little bit different inside. Okay, so you are then going to score your little patty around the edges with that little hash mark design, either with your teeth rib or a uh, mud shark. And then you're also going to score the bottom edge of your mug body. So once everything is scored, you are going to add a little bit of water to your base. And then you're going to take your cylinder of your mug body and kind of shimmy it and attach it to the base. You're going to want to, kind of similarly to when you attach to the um, edges of your mug cylinder, you're going to want to spend some time rubbing out that seam and making sure it's really well attached both on the outside and then on the inside. And a good little tool that we didn't talk about for the inside is a paintbrush, just slightly damp. You can get in there and swirl that seam around. I also like to use a polymer rib and kind of sweep around the edge to smooth everything in. Also, if you have a part that's kind of lopsided like I do here, you can take your needle tool and trim that off. So once you have your base and your body of your mug how you want it, we will attach the handle. So we're going to show you two different ways. I'm going to show you a slab built handle and I'm going to pull a handle. So for the slab built handle, I'm taking the slab that I had for my base. You could also roll out a new one if you needed to and you're just gonna lay it down and I'm going to cut just a long skinny rectangle. Have your handle shaped and cut how you want to. You're going to figure out where you want to place it on your mug body <laughs> and I'm going to attach it just like this. If you want to pull a handle you're going to start with a chunk of clay and kind of like a carrot shape and then you're going to spend some time rolling it a little bit. Then when you get kind of a worm shape, you are going to get your hand and the clay very wet and pull down so you're going to make an okay sign with your fingers. Start at the top, slowly pull down, get more water, and repeat until it is the width that you're liking for a handle. And then you cut, so I like this section here, kind of all uniform and the same width. And I'm going to just cut off this excess clay from the top using my mud shark needle tool. And then I'm going to create the um, shape that I want. And I'm gonna let this sit for probably, I don't know, like 15 minutes or else you can hit it with a hairdryer. So for attaching both of the handles, Again, you're gonna use the slip and score technique. So you're gonna score either with your needle tool or your tooth rib. Score, add a little water, score your handle. And you're going to just wiggle that on and attach it to your mug surface. You can decide if you want it. So Elise decided to put her handle kind of just to the left of the seam. You can also put it directly on top of the seam to kind of hide it. Um, it's up to you. Just like your other seams, you're gonna wanna really make sure that they're adhered. So spending time either with your rib, smoothing out the surface, or with the fettling knife end of your mud shark and kind of tracing around all of the seams with the handle. And there you have it a hand-built mug. You're going to want to leave your mug covered with light plastic. A shopping bag works really great for around like two days probably. Um, anything, Anytime you add pieces, so adding this handle, you're going to want to slow dry it to avoid cracking. Thanks for tuning in!
Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to explore our other Clay Day at Home resources and make at home.